Thank you, Yen and Richard, for that lead-in into worship today. Good evening, and I welcome you all to our fifth and final midweek Lenten service. Our theme on Wednesday nights during this season of Lent has been the faith practices of fast, pray, and give. Last Wednesday night, Marsha Weehy was here to talk about uh, the faith practice of giving through acts of service. She did a beautiful job, and tonight, uh, Pastor Peter is going to wrap it all up, bring it all together for us in his sermon this evening. In your worship bulletins, there are a few announcements that I want to draw your attention to tonight. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you that throughout this season of Lent, we are receiving an offering, a Lenten offering for ELCA World Hunger. And you may remember that in past years, uh, we've received this offering in Lent through uh, the practice of a bread auction. And because of the pandemic, we didn't feel that was a safe practice, our best practice this year. So we're simply uh, asking people to give. There are offerings available, offering envelopes available on the usher's table. You can pick them up there and put them uh, in, in the offering plates, drop them by the church office or make a secure online donation. ELCA World Hunger is a wonderful division of our church body and they do a great job of both advocating uh, for hungry people and putting food into the hands and mouths of hungry people, both domestically and globally. In your worship bulletins, you will find our schedule for the upcoming week. This coming Sunday is Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. And that day kicks off for our Sunday School and Faith Friends students with an event at 9 a.m. walking through Holy Week. This involves all kinds of hands-on uh, experiences to introduce our children and give them a whole picture of what Holy Week is about. Our Palm Sunday worship is at 10.15 a.m. here in our sanctuary, and it will be our radio broadcast that day as well and on Facebook Live. And our children will be processing uh, with palms that Sunday morning as well. Worship on Monday, Thursday is at 7 p.m. On Good Friday, services at both 9 and 7. And on Easter Sunday, we will be worshiping Easter morning at 9 and 11 a.m. And we're encouraging all of our United folks to reserve a place for Easter Sunday. You can do that by going online uh, through our website or you may uh, call the church office and we'll make sure that you have a place here at United on Easter morning. I believe that those are the announcements that need to be made tonight. And so I invite you uh, to center yourself in prayer as we enter into this time of worship. Will you please stand? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Peace from 
from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord For the well-being of the church of God And for the unity of all Let us pray to the Lord Kyrie eleison Lord have mercy upon And for all who offer here their worship and praise Let us pray to the Lord Kyrie Defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in rushing waters and in dry wilderness, in every season and circumstance, we need your sustaining word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, proclaim the good news among us today so that we may repent and believe and see anew how the time is fulfilled and the kingdom has come near. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And please be seated. Our scripture reading for this evening comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. Paul writes, Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, Persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty but associate with the lowly, do not claim to be wiser than you are, do not repay anyone evil for evil but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. 
Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, when we began our Lenten season, we began with this theme, uh, fast, pray, and give. And we wanted to focus on these practices of Lent that have been, that the church has used throughout the ages that have helped Christians, I think, to reconnect with their faith or, uh, or their relationship with God. And with this being the last week uh, before Holy Week, uh, this is our last of our Lenten series to do that. And so, as Pastor Carla said, I'm supposed to bring this home now. Well, the reading from Paul's letter to the Romans this evening, perhaps better than any other I could think of, any other pastor, sums up the basis for why we do these things and how they are marks of the Christian life together. It begins by saying, let love be genuine. It begins this way because Paul reminds us that we love because Christ first loved us. Earlier in Romans, in the fifth chapter, he states, God showed us his love for us, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And then again, in Romans 8, he says, Paul assures readers that nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord surrounded and upheld by this undeserved and steadfast love, well then the community of Jesus Christ practices love. Let love be genuine, Paul says. And then he spends the rest of the chapter describing this sincere, non-hypocritical love. You know, in these verses, Paul uses 30, 30 imperatives to speak about a life living out the love of Christ. And in among these are calls to persevere in prayer, fast from revenge, violence, hatred of your enemies, and a clear calling to give. Give to the needs of the saints. Give comfort to those who suffer. Give honor to all. Give hope to those in need. Give hospitality to strangers. And yes, even give food and water to your enemies. All of our Lenten practices are laid out for us to follow. The way the Apostle Paul says these things, though, makes it clear that this is not something that we just do by ourselves. This isn't a Lone Ranger kind of thing. We are called to do this in community. Paul addresses us, we, the community of believers, the whole church. We are called upon to do these things together. And not only do we do and live this in community, but through the community's support, and also, more importantly, through the gift of the Holy Spirit to guide and challenge us to seek out new ways to live out the love of Christ. You know, for seven summers between high school and graduating from seminary, uh, I worked at Lutheran Bible camps, first as a volunteer, and then several summers as a camp counselor, and then as a program director, and finally I was a a director of one of the camps itself. And each work week during these summers, I witnessed a a phenomena that happened uh, to the camp community that was both beautiful and inspiring. Each week, a collection of youth from Lutheran churches from all around the region would gather on Sunday afternoon, and sometimes a church would come with a bus full of kids, or some of us as cars with bring one or two together, a friend maybe or an individual. And they would come together on that Sunday afternoon to camp, most of them now strangers to one another as they're grouped together in cabins. And as the week progressed, these strangers in cabins started to bond. And through the worship services and Bible studies and singing and praying and playing, and sharing and work in service, a transformation happens. A new kind of community was formed. It wasn't a perfect community without struggle and without problems, but it it was a community of believers that by Friday, Friday at noon, when it was time to go back home, there were many, many tears and a longing to reconnect next summer and a longing to bring this experience back home with them to their own communities. And you know, it wasn't the camp songs, or the cool counselors, or even the beautiful setting that created this community. It was, however, the intentional, 
practices of living out the love of Christ that made this transformation possible. Now, I suspect the children and youth are far more open to the Holy Spirit's influence. And of course, being at a setting apart from the daily routines tends to concentrate that experience and allows change to happen more quickly. But, but I think that all of us can and have experienced the love of Christ through community. People who have given of themselves to rejoice with us when we are celebrating something. People who weep with us when we are weeping. People who have given and shared of their time and of their resources so that the hungry are fed and those without homes have shelter and forgiveness is shared. Our community too can, has, and will continue to live out the love of Christ that has been so freely poured out upon us without cost or obligation. Paul encourages us this Lenten season with his words, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. For Paul, love is not simply an emotion. It is not a concept. It is not a theme. It is a practical reality lived out in community. Lived out not simply for our sakes, but for the sake of others, for the sake of the whole world. And so let us this Lenten season embrace this practical reality of Christ's love in our lives for the sake of the world. Amen. Watch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Tend your ailing ones in your love, Lord. Rest your weary ones in your love, Lord your dying ones in your love O Lord of all Watch O Lord with all those awake this night Watch O Lord with all those who weep Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep Soothe your suffering ones Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Hold your grieving ones in your love, Lord. Raise your fallen ones in your love, Lord. And your broken ones in your love, O Lord. Oh Lord, with all those awake this night, watch, O oh Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Guard your little ones in your love, Lord. Guide 
guide your searching ones in your love lord grant us all your peace in your love O lord of all watch O lord with all those awake this night watch O lord with all those who weep give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. As a community of believers, we uh, join together in sharing our gifts, our offerings, uh, for the sake of the world, for the sake of Christ's love in our community. And so we will be receiving our offering at the door, or if you are watching online, you can send your offering in or go to our website and uh, give it through a secure, our secure website. And so let us pray. Would you please stand? God of steadfast love and faithfulness, we are humbled as we try to do what is right and walk in your ways. Receive our offerings and use them for, the, for your good purposes in your church and in the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good everywhere and always to give you thanks and praise. Holy God, mighty and immortal, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who calls us to return to you and live. For you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger, full of love, and faithful to your promises. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one at the table of the Lord, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you now to take out your chalices as we share in this meal together. This is the body of Christ given for you. When we share the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen.
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Creator of the stars of night, we give you thanks for this gift of life. Increase our faith and open our eyes that we might recognize Jesus in all whom you call us to love and serve. Abide with us as darkness deepens and be our hope and highest joy until at last with all your saints we dwell in your unfailing light. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. Holy God, blessed Trinity, strengthen your faith, increase your hope, deepen your love, and give you peace this night and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, rest in God, rise to serve. Thanks be to God. <laughs>